Welcome to a new season of The Perspective with Mike Sherboneau. Mike's guest co-host this week is wife, mother, speaker, and author of the new book, Trauma Queen, Julie Stotland. In these exhausting times we're all living in amid a global pandemic, there are deep divides over masks, vaccinations, politics. Our interactions and relationships can suffer when we're under significant pressures and not aware of the things we can do to change. You're not alone if you're feeling the pressure coming at you from all sides. Today on the program, never give up even if you sometimes feel like you want to. Mike talks with relationship expert Andrea Gruenwald, who says emotional triggers, anxiety and stress are controllable when we become aware of our own patterns and deal with them. Hey, welcome to The Perspective. I'm Mike Sherboneau. If you've ever felt like giving up, then today is the day you need to stay tuned to the program. Along with our special guests, and my special co-host, Julie Stotland, we're gonna talk about how not to ever give up. Julie, I'm really glad you're here again with me. Yes, Thank you. it's so, so much fun. You've been surviving. I have been, well, I've been thriving. You haven't thriving. given up, you I've haven't given up. I haven't given up, no. Nope. Yeah, and we're gonna talk about that subject because sometimes those little pithy statements, you know, they're cute, but they really bug me. I'm just going to be totally honest. Well, say, and, and on that point, I have some quotes to share with you, and I want to hear your are thoughts. Are they going to bug me? Well, they, they might. They okay. might. All right. Let's, let's see. Give okay. me your best one. All right. So here's one from Christopher Reeve. Once you choose hope, anything is possible. Once you choose hope, anything is possible. Okay, I'll, I'll let that one stand uh, because okay. I'm a great believer in hope, but it depends who the hope is anchored in. And I think that's an important point yeah. there. All right. How about this from C.S. Lewis? There are far, far better things ahead than anything we leave behind. Okay, so you're two for two because I like C.S. <laughs> Lewis. All right. All right, all right. I'm going to push back somewhere. Okay, St. Francis of Assisi. Start by doing what's necessary, then do what's possible, and suddenly you are doing the impossible. Yeah, okay, maybe three for three. All but right, but right. here's the thing about St. Francis, Francis of Assisi, you know, an interesting church father. Mm -hmm. And he had a, a powerful perspective that was forged out of his relationship with God. So what you've really been giving me today are not so much the wacky thoughts. Okay. okay. Do you have any in there? Wacky thoughts. Um, well, Winston Churchill said, if you're going through hell, keep going. <laughs> yeah, okay. We'll leave Winston for now. Okay. Abraham Lincoln said, I walk slowly, but I never walk backward. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and those are statements of incredible confidence. Mm -hmm. But, you know, as we think about those statements of incredible confidence, there are times when you know, we've also heard the other adage, you know, two steps forward and three steps backward. Mm -hmm. I, I go to David in the Old Testament. He says, why are you so downcast, O my soul? Right. And he just was flat out. But he said you know, I'm still going to praise God. And yes. that's where I want to talk today. Just deal with the reality. Sometimes reading these statements as inspiring as they can be, they're just not enough. We need something more, don't we? Absolutely. But I, I want to finish with this one because I know you're a hockey guy. Okay. So Wayne Gretzky said, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. <laughs> Okay, good on Wayne. <laughs> and every once in a while, I go up to uh, Brantford and I play in the Wayne Gretzky Arena. Oh. And they take videos of me and they send them to him. Not really. I took you, I brought you right in that okay. one. <laughs> okay, yeah, you, you duped me there. Okay, that's my imagination. That's my <laughs> imagination running wild because we all have a dream. And in the midst of never giving up, we want to encourage you today to hold on to your dream. Whether it's to be a professional hockey player, or maybe to be a stunt motorcycle driver. Those are two things for me, Julie. Right. I kind of pondered. Right. But I don't know what your dream is, but we want to help you to recapture it as you discover the truth of God's love for you. Right. Well, Mike, on that, talking about relationships, let's go now to your interview with your relationship expert, Andrea Grunwald. Welcome to this segment of The Perspective, and I'm delighted today to have with us a registered psychotherapist. She's the founder of the Five Star Relationships and creator of the powerful Five Star Model of Leadership. What does that mean? Well, we're going to be unpacking it together, but I think more importantly than anything, she would want to say that she's a mother, uh, she's a wife, she's a person who is committed to you and I having healthy relationships. And I'm excited that Andrea Gruenwald is with us today. Andrea, thank you for coming on the program. Um, so glad so you're here. Thanks for having me. 
You know, I want to jump in and just ask some, some of the tougher questions. I know you get hit with them all the time in your professional practice, but also just as an individual, we're all struggling with a number of issues. It seems that everything is related these days to COVID, but if we could take three steps back from that C word and maybe just talk in general, I think it's going to help us a lot, especially as we think about our emotions. Uh, why do you think society is not dealing well with their emotions right now, specifically anger? And I guess we could throw in sadness and grief and sorrow in the whole lot, but we're seeing such explosive anger with people. What are your thoughts on that? I think during this time, we've really had a concentrated uh, experience at home, at work, a lot of the satisfiers, things that we do in terms of relating with people and having fun and traveling and uh, things that offset some of our stress aren't there. And meanwhile, the other things are intensifying. So we're still having losses. We're still experiencing sort of a, a it almost feels like sort of our lives are kind of being uh, closed in or becoming smaller. Um, so we're still having these strong emotional uh, experiences. You know, I if I could jump in uh, sure. with my amateur uh, view of being a, a psychiatrist, right? I kind of look at people, it's almost like we're grasping at stuff. And maybe that's yeah. where some of the anger is coming out. We're trying to reclaim things. I mean, we've seen it with... Uh, college students going back to college and seem to be partying harder than they did in previous years, maybe trying to recapture things. Do you think that there's some merit to that thought? I think we're trying to kind of figure out what our new normal is and how to get our lives back on track and get some of that influx of fun and um, meaningful relationships and things that are so important. So people are reacting more to negative situations like you said reactive anger and they're partying harder or they're they're seeking fun and satisfaction harder as well well let's take for a moment those that are too old to party hard in that <laughs> way and just uh what are you, what are you saying mike <laughs> uh, listen okay let's not go there okay are you, are you calling this uh program or am i yeah but here's the reality people are feeling pretty beat up these days um what do you observe are some of the negative patterns that you know our viewers need to be aware of, like in our own journey? How do I stay mentally strong? I think the thing to recognize is that we are driven by feelings, whether we like it or not. And the only way that we're not driven by feelings is by using our executive functioning. So, you know, to your point, we often get this chatter in our head, we're not good enough, we're not loved in the way that that we want to be. And so we sort of react to various situations based on our thinking, not based on the reality. So I think when, when those feelings come up, we need to kind of take the time to reflect and be able to recognize how they might drive our behavior and think about something that's more in line with what we want to be and what we're intending to accomplish in that interaction. Okay, have you noticed how that people are evaluating themselves more, especially as we've come through these last 18 months? Are they reflecting more? Because sometimes I think there's a lot of baggage from the past prior to COVID that we've never dealt with. And maybe could it be coming to the surface? Hmm. I think you're, you're right. I think that's insightful. Um, it's an observation that this experience over the last two years has really uh, created an existential crisis. And so people are reflecting on their lifestyle, they're reflecting on their values. And that can be really positive if we think about who we want to be, and what we want to be, and how we want to live. Uh, so it really can be a positive outcome to a negative situation. Well, I'm going to ask if the doctor's in the house. So I'm going to give you a, a minute to uh, help me get back on track. Let okay. me ask you this question. When our self-confidence has been knocked out from underneath us, you know, when our legs have been knocked out, what practical things would you tell me to do to get back on my feet? And we'll let the rest of our guests just listen in. And maybe there's some spiritual principles and laws that you hold on to. I'd love to hear those things. I think if we're not trying uh, big things and challenging things, then we're not, ex then we wouldn't experience failure. So the first thing is to recognize the reason life is tough is because you're really trying to do something positive and reflect on that positivity. Uh, the other thing is to reflect on really what brings you meaning and purpose in life. 
We all need a reason to get up in the morning. For me, it's helping people, talking to people, um, helping them sort out their challenges and the things in front of them. So I think when your self-esteem takes a hit, take a step back, think about what you're thinking about, what you want to accomplish, what your meaningful relationships are, and, and really be kind and self-compassionate in the process. Um, I think all of us are trying to sort things out and trying to find out what those things are in our life that are the, the non-negotiables, the critical pieces, and uh, just give yourself time to kind of figure that out and, and give yourself the, the gift of time uh, to reflect and, and, um, and really give, give, do that with kindness and self-compassion. Okay, that, that's helpful. I'm going to invite uh, Julie Stotland, our co-host, to come into the program right now. And, and maybe we could take the last three or four minutes and just unpack some of the things about worry and anxiety. And, and Julie, as you've been listening to the uh, conversation, uh, jump right in. What's well, on your mind? Well, I was thinking also that, uh, you know, with social media, it's been a benefit and it's also been a hindrance. And so it, it may make people feel calm. It may make people feel more full of worry. What are your thoughts on that and how how to, to maneuver through that? What it, overall, have you do you think it's been good or bad? That's a great question, Julie. I think that social media sort of, it, they're snapshots of people's lives. And, and so it, it can, it's fine. Um, the, the concern for me comes in, don't extrapolate that that's that person's life. You know, we look at these positive pictures and positive sound bites in social media. And if we think that's the person's life, they're always that happy They're It's always good then we've kind of taken away a, a, an incorrect perspective. Um, That's so true, so true. So Andrea, let's take a little spin and, and speak to the claims that Jesus made. Uh, this has come up in, in another show that we've done, but Jesus talked about not being anxious, mm -hmm. and yet anxiety seems to be going through the roof, even for those yeah. who claim to be followers of Jesus. Mm -hmm. What word would you say to them, and how do we understand his teaching? Well, for me, you know, um, I believe God gave us all these emotions and God hard, hardwired that emotional response of anxiety into us, um, not for the purpose of anxiety, but for the purpose of recognizing a threat. And so when we feel anxious, it's because we somehow emotionally perceive a threat and, and anxiety tricks us into thinking there's a threat, but it's not actually there. And so when I think about scripture and I think about God, I think about, you know, God is with us. Um, God gave us a mind to be able to really focus on all of the information that's in a situation, not just the information that tells us there's a threat. We need to take the time to also assess the information that's in the situation that says it's not a threat. It's OK. Um, or there, you know, it's it's there's one point that maybe is a concern, but there's three points that we have strength um, to deal with the situation. So I think the perspective that God gives us is one, that he's always there, two, that we can assess all of the information to assess, is this threatening or not, and to what extent. You know, as you share that, I, got a, I don't know why, I got this picture of somebody in the boxing ring, and they've been knocked down. Um, yeah. How do you tell people to get back up? You've already shared a couple things. What are a couple practical steps as we conclude today that you would say to people, say, here are the steps you need to take to get back up again? Yeah, that's, I think it's really important to recognize getting knocked down is part of life. If Again, if we're trying to do something, there's going to be successes and failures. We're going to get knocked down. So the first thing is recognizing it's completely normal to get knocked down. And, and then to recognize and think about other times when you've had strength, resiliency, that this is building character and hope in you as you deal with difficult situations. Um, think about about what kinds of things are being built in you as a person, um, and then and then connect it to whatever purpose. For me, I think about that's gonna and and that's gonna help me to help other people, and that's very motivating for me. So for for everyone else to think about and how is this going to help other people? Those are uh, helpful things that you've shared with us. And again, I want to say thank you to Andrea Grunewald for being with us today, our special guest. Thanks for speaking life into our situation.
As we think about those pithy statements we were referencing at the beginning of the program, I'm to come up with another one by Henry Ford. He said, there are two kinds of people, those who say they can't and those who say they can. Both are right. And perhaps you're not sure today which category you fall into. But I want to encourage you today that as we listen to God's word, that you can be a person who can. And by that, I'm referencing the words of the Apostle Paul himself, who said, I can do all things through Jesus who gives us the strength. Now, in the context of what we're dealing with today, uh, and never, never giving up, that perseverance to press on, we go back to the words of Winston Churchill, who, when he spoke after World War II to his old alma mater, he gets up in front of them and he grabs the podium and they're waiting for some long speech. And he looks at these young men in the eyes and he says, never, never give up. Those are great words. They're powerful words. They're inspirational words. But how do we do that? Especially when we're lying flat on the canvas. And it seems that life has given us that sucker punch that has just ended us. You know, the Apostle Paul understood what that was like. Yesterday in our teaching, we talked about how we can look to Jesus. It says he has gone through the things that we go through. And yet he has resisted. He has not given into temptation. But we have a great high priest that we can turn to for strength and help. But how does that spill out in your life and mine? How is it that I don't give up? How is it that I keep pressing on? And you're dealing with today likely some very difficult situations. Maybe it's a health issue. Maybe it is a financial situation. Perhaps it's a relationship that is broken up. And you're saying, it's all over. I just don't want to press on anymore. The Apostle Paul gives us an insight from death row. That's right. He is waiting for the executioner to take his life for crimes that he has never committed except being faithful to his Lord, Jesus Christ. And as we come into Philippians chapter 1, we move on a little bit in our journey. And I want to teach today uh, where he says, I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you all, making my prayer with joy. He says, he teaches us that here is the secret to not giving up. Three simple things. First of all, start praying with joy. He says, whenever I pray, I make my request for all of you with joy. He says, you have been my partners in spreading the good news about Christ from the time you first heard it until now. And I'm certain that God who began the good work within you will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ returns. Now, maybe prayer is something that's strange in your life, but I want to invite you to make it a real part of your daily journey. You know, prayer is many times what uh, a wheel is to a bicycle, what an engine is to a car. In my own journey, prayer is critical if I'm going to keep pressing on because it's when I get time to speak to my Heavenly Father and when I listen for Him to speak to me. And God does speak. He does speak, and he wants to speak into your heart today through reading his word, through the impressions of his spirit in your heart, and through a variety of other ways. But Paul says, I pray, and I pray with joy. Now, the problem with prayer for many people is this. You see, prayer eats at the heart of a secular society. Uh, prayer is actually an admission that we need God. Many times we listen to the newscasts and it can be some traumatic event. And in certain countries, they'll say, we need to pray. But unfortunately, in Canada, you never hear those words because we don't want to bring God into the mix. People, he is standing there on the sidelines of your life right now, inviting you to ask him to come and to be your very present help in trouble. That's right. Right now, right today. Paul also knew the importance of not just praying with joy because joy is the language of faith saying, God, I am trusting you in the midst of what I'm going through. But Paul knew about the importance of partnerships. He says, pray with joy and build partnerships. He says it in um, verse chapter, uh, chapter one and verse five. He says, I'm thankful because of your partnership in the gospel. You've helped me in spreading the good news, and I hold you in my heart. Now, what Paul realizes is that we can't do it alone. Many times we've grown up with that Lone Ranger mentality, but the Lone Ranger was never alone. He always had Tonto coming to help him and to rescue him and bail him out. We need 
to realize that God has not called us to live alone, to do it in our strength, but to do it with his strength. Can I encourage you to build partners, to build relationships? Even in the midst of COVID, when we are so insular, I am so thankful for the friends that have stood with me, that have walked with me through the ups and downs of life. We need those relationships. And you need to step out of where you're at right now and start to build those relationships. There are so many examples. We don't have time for them today. But here's the other thing that I find with the Apostle Paul. He says, start praying with joy. He says, build partnerships. And then he says, choose to rejoice. We don't have a lot of time to unpack this, but Paul had been sucker punched by two different groups of people. One were the Jewish people who had turned on him and put him in prison. And the second were Christians who took advantage of the situation Paul was in and perhaps out of jealousy, then they started to preach and they started to speak. And Paul says, you know what? As painful as that is, as much as I don't understand it, I'm going to choose to rejoice. I'm going to choose to press on. Julie is going to jump in for a moment as we unpack this final thought. But think about this. Will you choose to rejoice? Because in the midst of choosing to rejoice, that becomes the key to never giving up. That becomes the energy, at least from my perspective. What do you think, Julie? It's so true because happiness comes and goes. We are happy for a moment, but we have to make up our minds. We actually have to be active. We have to take our will and we have to say, I'm going to choose to be joyful and to rejoice in God. And when we do that, it's almost like God has wired us. They say scientifically that when you choose to smile, even when you don't feel like it, it actually has a physical impact impact on our mood. And I think God has purposely wired us that way because he wants us with our will to actively choose to rejoice. You know, I have had many friends over the years who've encountered awful situations. Mm -hmm. We could take sh programs to unpack oh, it. But what has changed their situation was that in the midst of what they were going through, they chose to rejoice. Yeah. And they have spoken so much life and example into my life as well. Absolutely. And I, I think a good point you made is in like to remember to look up. You remind us to look up because we get so caught up in the things around us that we get overwhelmed by that. And we forget we need to look up, look up to God. It was like Peter when he was in the boat and they stepped on the water and started to go down. He looked mm -hmm. up and he saw Jesus. He did. What a great thought for us today. It is. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Well, here at The Perspective, we love to talk about the unsung heroes among us who do selfless things to help others. Take a look at Mike's story about a local food bank's miraculous growth over the last year, even amid a pandemic. All sorts of amazing stories have come out of COVID. Call it a uh, COVID miracle. We call it the North End Food Bank. It was a response to a nudge in a leader's heart to provide food for the many families that were struggling when COVID first hit. North End Church is a brand new church. It's a church plant, it's three years old. And suddenly after 15 months, COVID hit, and we wondered how the church would even survive. But God moves through generous people and people started to give, people started to share. What's unique about the North End Food Bank is that most people can't get to it uh, by car because people who are in need don't have transportation. And so one of the few food banks in the Niagara region, North End Food Bank, delivers the food. And so what started with one or two families grew to 10 or 20. And now after a year, the North End Food Bank cares for over 400 families through generous gifts uh, from boxes from Indigo to E.D. Smith making generous donations, the list goes on and on. The people have given incredibly. This year alone, over 62,000 pounds of food have come into this little food bank. It's like the little engine that could. 
Never underestimate the power of a dream. Never underestimate what God can do through you. Consider, if you do, North End Food Bank. Well, Julie, I get excited when I watch that Absolutely. video clip. And uh, you know, uh, as well as me, that I've had uh, been able to be a firsthand observer of the North End Food Bank. Mm -hmm. And for those of you who might not know, uh, it's been my privilege to plant North End Church along with my wife, Terry, uh, just almost three years right now. And to see what happened with a, a small handful of people that started to gather and then it started to grow, now we've seen the food bank mushroom. You know what is very interesting, Julie, as we've watched this, is that people came in and said, I can help. And you know, and that's, that's what's so important is that I think about this, you know, when we are dealing with stress, when we're dealing with the things around us and we're, we're so consumed with our own lives, I keep thinking one of the biggest and most easiest things to do is to look outward. And once we do, so many times that refreshes ourselves and what refreshes our spirit. We feel so much more alive. And we feel so much better about life when we're giving back. Yeah, and so what actually happens is that people started to step up with great administrative gifts, uh, far more than mine. <laughs> and, you know, God was just saying, you just step back, you be the cheerleader. And uh, a lot of times I'll raise the flag and say, hey, if people want to donate, they can. Yeah. But it has been nothing short of a miracle to watch what has happened and to see the people so awesome. that are awesome. finding purpose because they're saying, you know what, I can do this. Some are right. early retirees. Some are not. Some are still working. They're saying, I'm going to give three or four hours, and I'm going to go out and deliver the food. You know, I think that's what's the real gem of this pandemic, if you can actually say. But there are some gems where people have risen up and said, what can I do? What little thing can I do to make a difference in someone's life? Because we can't change it for everybody, but what can I do right where I'm planted? Yeah, and if I could say one other thing is that many times we think, hey, I'm not into a food bank or stuff like that. Never say never to God because you'll right. never know where mm -hmm. he's going to take you. Mm -hmm. And as we get back to the theme for this week, as we talk about, you know, not giving up, not pressing on, mm -hmm. can I encourage you again today to realize that you can find strength for your situation by turning and saying, Lord, will you be my savior? Will you be my Lord? Will you be my helper? Because I want to remind you and leave you with this truth that God is for you and no one can be against you. He is your refuge and your strength.